Substrate. Use sandy chips, calcium sand, or terrarium carpet. Don't do that. Good morning, reptilians. Welcome and welcome back to the channel. So just like the last couple of weeks, this week we are going to be looking at Petco versus PetSmart's Leopard Gecko Care Guides. I don't know what to expect like the last ones. I've never actually looked at these before, but I feel like from what I have heard from other people, the Leopard Gecko ones are not good. So we are going to dive right into that. We've done this for three weeks now in a row, and this is going to be the last one of these for a little bit. I just don't want you guys to burn out of this kind of video, but a lot of you were asking for the Leopard Gecko one specifically, so we're going to do that and then maybe in the future we can do some other sorts of animals maybe I don't know before we get started this video is sponsored by the Dubia Dude so make sure to stay until the end of this video to find out how you can save 10% off of your entire order at the let's get started so starting with Petco the picture is super cute this baby leopard gecko is so adorable uh, little leopard gecko facts average adult size six to nine inches long average lifespan 20 plus years with proper care yes diet insectivore and then the same little disclaimer as always will reach adult size in at nine to 12 months under ideal conditions upgrade habitat size as your reptile grows and hopefully they will actually get into what size we need to be upgrading to fingers crossed diet a well-balanced leopard gecko diet consists of insects including crickets small mealworms and wax worms use gut loaded recently fed crickets no larger than the space between the gecko's eyes they don't talk about doobie roaches doobie roaches you guys know yes they're the sponsor of this video but i talk about it all the time i have like a little colony going on down here doobie roaches are super super nutritious and they are fantastic for leopard geckos so if you can get doobie roaches i would highly suggest doobie roaches because they are fantastic and healthy they don't really specifically say it, but it is very much recommended to switch up your leopard gecko's diet. So don't just feed crickets and don't just feed mealworms. Try to vary their diet since they are insectivores. That means the only thing that they are eating are these insects. So it's important to give them different things to make sure that they are getting the full array of nutrients from the different critters that they're eating. You can also do black soldier fly larva or phoenix worms and calci worms. They can do super worms as adults. It says wax worms. I wouldn't use that as a staple because wax worms are very fattening and leopard geckos can actually get addicted to wax worms and not want to eat anything else. So you can definitely do wax worms as a treat, but don't make that your staple food for them. Feeding. Thanks to remember when feeding your leopard gecko. Fresh, clean, chlorine-free water should be available at all times. Yes, I use RepiSafe to dechlorinate my water in all of my reptile tanks. Unlike bearded dragons who people like to compare to leopard geckos who don't need a water bowl. Leopard geckos very much need a water bowl. Yes, they need their humidity to stay low, but leopard geckos will drink out of their water bowl. I see both of my leopard geckos drink out of their water bowl on a daily basis, so definitely make sure to provide that for them. Be daily. As babies, you want to feed them daily, but not as adults. Once they become an adult, you actually want to go down to about every other day, depending on what their weight is looking like. And you tell that by how big their tail is. If their tail is bigger than their body, then they are overweight and you need to slow down with feeding them. Sprinkle food with calcium supplement daily and a multivitamin supplement once or twice a week. You sprinkle them with calcium or whatever, whenever you feed them and a multivitamin um, once a week, once every other week. I just, instead of sprinkling it, since my leopard geckos mainly eat doobie roaches and mealworms and those things go into a bowl, I just put the calcium or the vitamins, whichever one I'm doing at that moment, into the bowl. And then as the worms wiggle around or the roaches crawl around, the dust will get on them so you don't actually have to worry about sprinkling it on there. Just a quick word of advice. You can also leave a dish of calcium powder without D3 in it, just pure calcium in there there enclosures and they will lick that if they feel like they're getting low on calcium. If you know your leopard gecko is like consuming it like an insane amount, you definitely take it out, but you can do that as well. Housing size. Appropriately sized habitat with secure cover. A 10 to 20 gallon tank is recommended for one leopard gecko. Yes, 20 gallon long is the bare minimum for an adult leopard gecko. A baby can go in a 20 gallon or a 10 gallon. Just make sure you size it up. But 
20 gallon long should be bare minimum. Uh, habitat, provide multiple hiding areas with non-toxic plants, branches, logs, and cork. Maintain humidity below 50%. Yeah, leopard geckos like a lower humidity and definitely provide multiple hiding areas. They don't actually talk about a humid hide though. So leopard geckos need three hides. They need a hot hide, a cool hide, and a humid hide. And what the humid hide does is you put sphagnum moss or wet paper towels or something in there and it is an enclosed hide and you keep it damp. And when leopard geckos are shedding they'll actually go in there and hide and just kind of soak up all that moisture and they will shed in there which is awesome so definitely make sure to provide one of those for them if not their shed can get stuck it can get wrapped around their little toes or the tips of their tails or especially around their faces and they can lose toes and stuff so make sure you definitely provide one of those for them substrate use sandy chips calcium sand or terrarium carpet Okay, so no, um, <laughs> please don't do that. Sandy chips, no, don't do that. Sandy chips is like Aspen, basically, little chips of Aspen. Don't do that. I've never even, don't do that. <laughs> Not only is Sandy chips, like I don't even know how to, okay, so number one, let, let's just talk about all the issues here. Number one, leopard geckos lick everything. Also, you don't want to throw crickets in your leopard geckos tank and then consume a bunch of sandy chips. You don't want a roach to escape out of your feeding bowl or a mealworm and then find it and go to bite it and get a mouthful of sandy chips. Like Aspen, sandy chips will mold and get mildewy if it is wet for too long. So if you have a wet hide and it's just putting off humidity out of the hole around that, it's gonna get all moldy and gross. Please don't use tiny chips. <laughs> That's so weird. Like why, I've never even, even in the Petco stores, I've never once seen them even use that. But calci sand, please don't use calci sand. Calci sand is awful and I talk about it so many times. I've talked about it a thousand times already. Calci sand is sand made from Tums basically and your leopard gecko consuming that is number one going to cause them to get impacted. They are, again, they go around, they lick everything. That means they're gonna be going around and just licking up calci sand nonstop. And impaction can literally cause your leopard gecko to die. Calci sand is not good, it's not good for anything. It's, if you have like a bioactive setup for your leopard gecko, those soils do contain sand, but they contain normal sand not calci sand. That's not even the kind of deserts they come from. They're rocks and compacted down clay and sand, not just loose sand and definitely not sand made out of calcium. And terrarium carpet, I also advise against terrarium carpet because of a couple reasons. Number one, terrarium carpet, if you look closely at it, has a bunch of little fibers and those little fibers make it very easy for your leopard geckos, tiny little claws to get stuck and they could injure themselves if they get stuck and can't get loose. And terrarium carpet, carpet is also very hard to clean and it can harbor parasites because of all the fibers, all the little bacteria and parasites just burrow into the fibers. I don't suggest it for the safety of the animal. You know, I always recommend tile bioactive setups. You know, I always recommend bioactive setups. You can also do things like the sand carpet. Sand carpet is going to be, again, very hard to clean and it's going to harbor parasites, but it's not going to catch your leopard gecko's toes and injure them. So that is an option if you just have to, if you just need the look of sand just know that you will need to change those mats out regularly you also have the option of non-adhesive shelf liners but please do not use sandy chips please do not use calcium sand and i do advise against reptile carpet temperature gradient 95 for the warm end slash basking area 78 to 88 for the cool end a leopard gecko's hot spot is good at 90 degrees that's what i keep my leopard gecko's hot spots at maybe 92 i mean i wouldn't have the the cool end at 88 because if you have a hot spot at 90 and the cool end at 88 that's not really a temperature gradient lighting come on petco lighting 10 to 12 hours of light per day is required because leopard geckos are nocturnal they are not they are crepuscular they were thought to be nocturnal so that just shows that petco doesn't update their care guides just throwing that out there they are crepuscular um anyways leopard geckos are nocturnal they do not require uvb lighting again they are crepuscular so they actually do need a uvb light it isn't required 
but it is very beneficial for them. So I do always say that you definitely should get a UVB light for your leopard gecko. Highly recommend to get one. An incandescent bulb can be used for basking area during daylight hours only. Can use ceramic heat heater or a nocturnal heat bulb at all hours. Don't use a nocturnal heat bulb. I recommend using heat pads with thermostats under their hot hides. So that way when they do go in there to sleep, they can be warm and not have to worry about coming out to warm up and bask or whatever. I do currently have heat bulbs also. If your leopard gecko likes to come out and bask, cause some do, some leopard geckos do come out and bask during the daytime. Use a heat bulb, you can use ceramic heat emitters. You can do any of those things. Just make sure that you are providing a temperature gradient and that you please try to provide a UVB light for them as well. Do not house two or more male geckos together and do not house different reptile species together. Don't put leopard geckos together. It doesn't matter if it's two females. Again, for a long time, it was thought that you could put females together, but then people started to realize that actually those cute little behaviors that females do like cuddling and all that stuff isn't them getting along. Reptiles, for the most part, there are some exceptions obviously, are solitary creatures and they do better on their own. So please keep your leopard geckos alive alone in their tank. Normal behavior. Nocturnal, active during the night and hide under rocks or burrow into the sand during the day. That is not a normal behavior because they're not nocturnal. Some leopard geckos, because they are crepuscular, do tend to sway towards being no nocturnal or sway towards being diurnal. But just because your leopard gecko likes to bask during the day doesn't mean that it's abnormal. It means that your leopard gecko likes to bask during the day. Leopard geckos will eat their skin when shedding. Yes, they do. So if you think that your leopard gecko isn't shedding, ever. They're growing, they're shedding, they're probably just eating it as they shed. Keep handling to a minimum as overhandling can cause them stress. This isn't true. Some of them, yes, again, all reptiles are going to have different personalities, but most leopard geckos very much tolerate handling and won't get stressed out from you handling them. Never grab a leopard gecko by its tail as they may drop their tail. Yes, very true. Their tails will grow back, but they do not look the same. Definitely do not pull on their tail. Don't grab them by the tail. If you are letting kids handle them, make sure that they are not grabbing them by the tail. Habitat maintenance. Thoroughly clean and disinfect habitat at least once a week. Yeah, same thing that all of them say. This always says bleach. I don't use bleach because that scares me. I use this solution here from Bearded Dragon. Co. Leopard geckos regularly shed their skin, ensure humidity of habitat is at appropriate level to allow proper shedding. Facilitate shedding, provide a shed box. Yes, a hide box with sphagnum moss that will aid in the shedding process. Yes, good job Petco. Definitely need one of those. Signs of a healthy animal, active and alert. Yes, clear eyes. Body and tail are rounded, filled out, but again, you don't want their tail to be bigger than their body. Healthy skin, clear nose and vent, eats regularly. Yes, all of this definitely all of this. Red flags, weight loss or decreased appetite. Yes, very much so. Leopard geckos tend to have a pretty good appetite. So if they're losing weight and they've stopped eating, definitely take them to the vet. Mucus in mouth or nose, swelling, retained shed on toes. Yes, all of those common health issues. Contact vet, contact vet, contact vet. Good job. Good job, Petco. And of course, our little section about how pregnant women and children shouldn't have reptiles. Still not true. Okay, so now let's look at PetSmart's care guide. Previously, PetSmart's has been better than Petco's, so hopefully this still reigns true because Petco's was awful. Five things to know about your leopard gecko. Can live as long as 20 years, can grow as long as 10 inches, in the wild, live in the desert, and are nocturnal. Already disappoint me. Unlike other geckos, leopard geckos don't have sticky hands, so he can't climb walls or vertical surfaces. Yes, the leopard gecko is one of only a few species that has distinct outer ears and eyelids. How do I set up my leopard gecko's home? Leopard geckos originate from the desert, so naturally they love a warm, dry environment. I thought they were gonna say naturally, I love the same. <sighs> but they also need a hiding place that's moist and lovely. This is where they retreat to when it's time to shed their skin. Up to three leopard geckos can live in the same terrarium. No. <sighs> No. You'll want to keep your leopard gecko in a well-ventilated terrarium with a screened lid. Start with a 10 gallon tank. If you're getting three geckos, think about increasing your tank size. 
No. If you're getting three, think about getting them bigger than a 10 gallon tank. No. If you're getting three, get three tanks. Temperature and humidity. Keep your leopard gecko's habitat toasty, like the warm climate he comes from. You should have a warm side and a cool side of the tank. Measure the temperature with a thermometer at each end. No. Measure the temperature with a temperature gun. Thermometers only are going to get the temperature right there in that floating spot. You need to use a temperature gun to get the reading of the temperature on their basking spot. You're aiming to keep the terrarium between 85 and 95 degrees on the warm end and 10 degrees lower on the cool side. Yes. Also, it's worth getting a hygrometer to make sure humidity remains in that 10 to 30 percent range, which geckos prefer. 10 percent is a little low. I would say 30 to 40 for a leopard gecko because at 10 percent, it's going to be dry in there. Lighting. Geckos require 12 hours of visible light a day. If you want to see what they do under cover of darkness, pick up a night specific bulb. No, do not do that. The issue with night specific bulbs, because I don't think I've addressed this in any of them. The reason that people think that red bulbs and blue bulbs are okay for reptiles is because they say that they can't see color. But even if you can't see color, you can still see that there is a light on and that there is a light shining into your tank and it still very much messes up their day night cycle. How do I set up my leopard geckos home? Use a layer of calcium sand substrate. Don't do that. For geckos shorter than six inches, use reptile carpet. These guys are so small that they might accidentally swallow the sand, which is bad for them. So we admit that the sand is bad for them. Scoop the waste at least once a week and change all the bedding at least once a month. Usually they have poop spots, so they will usually choose a back corner of their tank. Sometimes people get unlucky. It's a very front and center of the tank and that's where they always use the bathroom. So it makes cleanup super easy. Lizards like to play hide and seek. So your leopard gecko will thank you for placing a rock branch or other hiding place on the cool side of the habitat. One hiding spot per gecko is a good rule. Putting some moistened moss in their hide house will help when they are ready to shed their skin. How can I keep my leopard gecko healthy? It's a good idea to have a veterinary examine your leopard gecko shortly after you get them. Yes, yes, pet smart. That is a very good idea. Yes, I always recommend this. As soon as you get your lizard, it is always a wonderful idea to take them to the vet and at least have a parasite test done on them. And then you know, oh, they're just stressed out because they just got here, so they're not eating. Or, oh, they have parasites, so I need to treat them. Everyone's life so much easier. Take them to the vet as soon as you get them. When you first bring them home, don't handle your new leopard geckos for three to four days. Yes, I suggest a week. They need to get used to their new surroundings. It's a good time for a checkup if you notice these. Hiding more than usual. Yes, except for in the winter time because leopard geckos do do a semi-brumation sort of thing. So in the winter, if they're hiding more than usual, they're probably fine. Eating or drinking less. Losing weight, definitely. Swollen joints, definitely. Discharge from eyes, nose, or mouth, definitely. Discolored skin, noticeable shedding problems, droppings that are runny for more than two days. Yes, all of those things. And then the whole normal can carry diseases, blah, blah, blah. All right, so that happened. I'm super disappointed. So normally this is the part of the video where I'm like, oh, PetSmart, yours was so much better, good job. But they were both so bad. Petco says, oh, use sand, and then constantly talks about how you should use sand. And PetSmart says, oh, you can keep three, and constantly talks about if you decide to get three. Anyways, that is all for this week. As I said at the beginning of this video, this video is sponsored by the Dubia Dude. The Dubia Dude is an awesome place to get Dubia Roaches for your reptiles like leopard geckos. Dubia Roaches are so nutritious and I was talking about this in the video about how they are healthier than crickets. They don't carry parasites like crickets. They also don't stink like crickets do and they live for so much longer than crickets do. And it takes less of these to fill your guys up as opposed to something like crickets because they have more nutrients in there. The Dubia Dude's website is also super easy to navigate, which is so awesome especially in times like this where a lot of us aren't leaving our houses. It's so nice just to have those shipped directly to us and not have to worry about going out into the outside world to get those Dubia roaches. Make sure to use my code L at the dubiadude.com to save 10% off of your entire order. Thank you so much to the Dubia Dude for sponsoring this video. As always, if you have not already, please feel free to follow me on my socials and like, subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications every single time I put on a new video, which is every Sunday and some Wednesdays. This week's Instagram shout out goes to Gabby Boshoff for following me on Instagram and going through and liking a whole bunch of my stuff. Make sure you're following me on Instagram, guys, because a lot of times I let you guys vote on what the thumbnail of the week is going to be, and you get to see what the video is going to be the day before it comes out. So make sure you follow me there. We're almost at 3,000 followers on Instagram. I'm pretty excited about it. And this week's subscriber shout out goes to T Lily for commenting on last week's video. Thank you guys both so much. You are the bee's knees. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye. Started.
really stealthily cracking all yeah. the bones. <laughs> all of your bones. Terrible. <laughs> 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 you can also do black soldier fly larvae, phoenix worms. Are those the same thing? something in there and it is an enclosed hide what has happened did it die wonderful i was cold when i started this and now i'm sweating i'm assuming frustration lizards lizards again another legal disclaimer i'm not talking bad about petco and pet smart i'm just simply reading their care guide and commenting on it so just wanted to throw that out there